Every hour on the hour, when we listen and gain our knowledge and power, we turn to the no bullshit hour. Let's just start breaking this. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. <clears throat> Welcome back, brothers and sisters. No bullshit news nation. Karen is back. <laughs> Sorta. Of. So we gotta, we gotta, Kinda. we gotta pin away like the girl in the plastic bubble. <laughs> She's a COVID freak, but she's good for the... We, hey. we just couldn't listen to the shit microphone anymore. Hey, I've got my... That's not true. Mark got me a good one, but I've got my Clorox wipes. See, I'm all ready. I'm set. <laughs> Wait, they don't advertise. Don't they just say I got my sanitary wipes. Okay. Wait, don't go. <laughs> that's not white right either, Charlie. Ooh. Hey, can I get a shot of the silhouette of Karen in the... There, it is. there she is, the girl in the plastic bubble. She look, it looks like an interrogation. There's there for those of you listening and not watching. Yeah, there Karen looks like, like the silhouette of a buffalo nickel behind that. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. All right, folks, the only news program in the country bringing you hit men hiding out in Compton, communist economists, emergency room nurses. The cops, the robbers, the Black Lives Matter crowd, the Boogaloo Boys, the congressmen, everyone it seems, except the governor of my fair state, Michigan. But now, let me get this in order. Be gracious. Consider that job. COVID's running wild. 10,000 cases. And she show, won't shut it down. So, are you happy now? Are some of you happy? Gotta open it up. Well, here it is. And some of you are like, what the fuck? I believed in it. Now she's flip-flopping all over the place. Here's the deal when you got a job like that. You're trying to find the middle ground in a pandemic when there is none. In a country where it seems there is none. Her biggest problem seems to me are the people around her. You don't go with friends, you go with competent people. Right? They're in over their head. We all know it. They're not laser focused. They like to say they're laser focused. You know what they're doing? They're focused on laser dots like a cat running around the living room. That's what they're doing. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're going, wait. We don't talk on the No Bullshit News Hour. We do the work. Yes, we broke the news that the COVID honcho, the director of health and human services, was parting up down on the Gulf Coast in Margaritaville while Whitmer was arguing with Biden up here over vaccines that we forgot to order as the other health honcho was in the Keys and her kid was up here with COVID. I kid you not. And the reporter that broke that story, Kyle Olson of Breitbart News, joins us today. He's accused of being a partisan hitman. I'm being accused of being a partisan hitman. And I voted for her. Ridiculous. And in the meantime, in the meantime of all this, who really died? It's still the old people in the institutions. What have we done while nobody's looking now? What's it look like now, condition wise? They got their shots in the nursing homes. Yes, back with us, outraged and sad, is Nurse Tina to describe the horrid condition. Nobody's looking inside there since they got those shots. They're starving. Oh, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hang. Tini's a true talker. One of our people. All of us. As my friend Steve said to me today, before I got here, Steve's a liberal. I think I can say that. Environmentalist, fishing man, artist, right? He doesn't care anymore. Just give me the fucking facts. That's what we want out of our government. I'm not against anybody. Y'all know me. I just want better. You should want better. Now, we got red out there. Detroit Red 
is out on the blocks, Detroit's finest reporter, <laughs> pretty good comedian. Has the city mass poisoned those demolition lots while the mayor turned a blind eye? Red, are you there? I'm here. What do we got? What do you got coming up for us? Yep. Later on, I'm going to come back and let y'all know why I had to wear a chem suit and protection just to come by one of the city's demolition sites. What you? What, what, what are those, oven gloves? Are you wearing oven mitts? <laughs> Safety first. Safety first. Safety first. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 what do you got on there, man? It looks like a plastic pajamas. A gas mask. I got the whole gym suit. <laughs> What's those boots? They, they, these are my radio uh, active, <laughs> I hope so, I contamination hope. boots. It's the closest I can get to some foot protection. <laughs> man, them just look like Johnny Cash boots, dude. This is putting me on. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you, I did the best I could. I didn't know what the dirt <laughs> might do to my feet, so I had to wear some type of insulated protection. So Red's on the east side near beautiful Indian Village, if you're hearing me. Mm. It's confirmed that that whole swath, five lots, it's big, that the dirt's poisoned, and the city has not told you that. So we're here to tell you that. Karen, that's by where you live. Exactly. I'd like to know that. Hey, Red, that's by where you live. Yeah. It's bullshit, man. No more bullshit. Fix the shit. But before we get to Kyle Olsen, who apparently... <laughs> what, Kyle, what'd they call you? what the governor's people call you when you drop, drop the uh, bomb that the person in charge of the vaccine distribution down in Margaritaville, what'd they call you? Garbage white nationalists. That's what they called me. Oh, a garbage white nationalists. Well, we did have yeah. a communist on last week. I don't see any... Um, Nazi paraphernalia back there. What? It, wait, wait a minute. Bob Dylan. Is that what? Yeah, that that sounds like white nationalist, doesn't it? <laughs> Muddy <Yeah>. Waters. <laughs> See, sounds all like right. white nationalist, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, all right. Let me let me just uh, give me some of that music back again, just because I want to let everybody know something about American Coney Island. First of all, get the Coney kit. Go to AmericanConeyIsland.com. Get them right to your door. If you're still hunkered down, if not, they're open. They're open. And guess what? Breaking news. What? They got a secret menu. They do? Like in and out, kind of. Breaking news. No bullshit news. Secret menu at American Coney Island. The special double dog. Yes, the special double dog. Mm, okay. What do you think that is? <laughs> We don't yes. want to know, Charlie. Yes. No, we don't. Two dogs. Just Google it and see what, pop, see what pictures it's not pop there. up. Oh, okay. Just go order it and see what they give you. Okay, then there's the special double dog. That's the meat lover's paradise. You get the chili with two dogs, one bun. It's like a birthday cake for meat eaters. Right? Don't forget about the special. That's loose burger, ground round, kosher and halal. Yes. With Greek spices and no filler. And what are Greek spices? Garlic. Everything's Greek spices. <laughs> they invented spices. They did. You know that? Yeah. In trade. They, they, and, and society. And, and breathing. <laughs> yeah, and everything. And language. All goes back to the Greeks. It Just goes ask right them. back to American Coney Island at the corner of Lafayette in Michigan. Come on down and be respectful. Put a mask on. Don't walk around there like some kind of scientific asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just make a gesture to each of us. I, I already had it. I, I don't need to wear it, but I'm going to. Yes, you do, Charlie. See, that's the problem. People think that because they've had it or because they have the vaccine that they don't have to do anything. So therein lies the problem. No, you do need to do something. What do we need to do, Karen? You need to wear a mask. You need to wash your hands. You need to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Says the girl in the plastic That's bubble. That's right. Call me Michael Jackson 2.0. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. Thank you. Me too. All right. Let's uh, let, let, let's let's bring Kyle in for real. Kyle. Kyle, lay down what you did. Lay down what you did. You you broke the first story of uh, the COO of Michigan, Trish Foster, being down in Florida. Now, why does that matter, dude? Because there's everybody's entitled to a vacation. She's been working hard. There's no travel restrictions. So why were you like going after such a two-bit story? 
Well, it, it just seems to me that if you have the governor of the state of Michigan out telling people not to go on spring break, specifically saying don't go to Florida because they have the highest number of variants of any of the states in the country. Michigan has the second. So she she specifically said don't go to Florida. And then just a handful of days later, her COO, one of her top advisors, the person who is in charge of the vaccine rollout and who you would think is supposed to be in the state while uh, virus cases are out of control, would actually be working and not going to Florida and doing exactly what the governor told us not to do. Well, I mean... We're all telecommuting now anyway. I mean, well, you know, I mean, she's available. I'm assuming poolside. I mean, did she really need to be here? Well, I mean, I, I think that it helps to be here. Um, but but it to me, it sets a tone that if because what we're hearing is that you shouldn't travel to Florida because you may catch the virus, you may spread the virus, you may bring the virus back with you. Um, it's just not a good thing to do. Well, but then one of her top advisors does that. And then we find out, as, as you said, Elizabeth Hertel went to Alabama and she said that she was socially distanced on the beach. OK, that's fine. Sounds I mean, good. L- like you said, everyone I think everyone's entitled to to a, a vacation, but it sets a tone. And what it says to people who are skeptical about the strategy that the governor has, assuming she has one, is that this virus is really no big deal. Because if she's telling all of us we shouldn't travel, but then that's what her people are doing, what should people conclude? Well, as I say, like, okay, and then when I'm dealing, here's what I say. Well, it's out of control. Your top two COVID officers aren't listening to what the governor's saying. That genie's out of the bottle, man. It is Margaritaville. It is time. It's party. And you can't get the genie back in the bottle. That's the problem. Right. And, but, and then, so then when these stories come out, she says, she called it a, a partisan hit job and she, you know, attacked Breitbart's web or, you know, she attacked Breitbart as a, a garbage, garbage white nationalist website. And so they, they're, for whatever reason, they're just absolutely unwilling to just own up to the fact that this looked bad It sent a bad signal to the rest of us who are, you know, listening to her and not traveling. Um, And they just lash out and attack people. And that's look, you know, if you're working, that's the reputation here. I mean, it's it's like Trump light. I'm telling you, I live it because Hmm. I do the follow up on her tell. Your stories are 100 percent accurate. They don't get back to you. You're doing the right thing. I'd like a comment. What they did to me was this. They iced me 11 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, it pops up on MERS. It's a news agency out of Lansing. But they frame it. This guy frames, he's a good guy, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me tell you how we heard it, by the way. How we heard that the director of health and human services, who replaced the other guy that got the secret payout, remember that? Yeah. The way this comes to light, why I start my phone starts blowing up out of Lansing, is he's on the local morning radio talking about, he's a senator now, he's talking about the family vacation. It's not that hard. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm doing a partisan hit. Wrong. You are accurate. Was that a partisan hit? Do you only do shit looking to get the governor? Uh, no. I mean, if there's Republicans doing bad things, if there's Republicans that have double standards, no, they, they should be held accountable as well. And, and see, Trish Foster, what's interesting about it is that, you know, there was no sort of inside information or, you know, or speculation or, or anything like that. She posted pictures on Facebook. She posted the, the bit about her son having the virus. She posted that in a comment on Facebook. So she had no problem broadcasting to the world what exactly they were, where they were, what was happening at back at home, um, all of those sorts of things. And it just, it, it's the arrogance and the, I think, just sort of an indifference in a belief that people aren't going to care. They're not going to be held accountable. And it just, it's no big deal. I want to take a poll here. Joey, Mannequin Joe, is like, he's like dying like 18 different things. Right? <laughs> yes. And, and he take he's getting like a cornea replacement and is he's got 2020 vision. I don't but it's he takes it very seriously. Mark, 
He's a narcoleptic. He's a ninny. This guy. <laughs> yeah. We, he, I'm serious. His wife will beat him up if he's like Co Karen. Well, I haven't gone anywhere. Karen's. That's right. Karen's in a plastic closet over here. <laughs> so we we all know this. Look, her tell wasn't fully vaccinated. We know that um, Foster is poolside with a bunch of schoolgirls. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not even allowed to get the vaccine till you're 16. Your son's got it. You could, hey, Karen, you think, like, even if she got the vaccine, she might be carrying it in her nasal passages? Well, but this is the thing, though, Charlie. You still have to practice some degree of of safety. I mean, I saw a beer commercial, and, you know, everybody in, uh, standing the around the bar, and they've got beer, and they've got a, a button on that says, I've been vaccinated. And they're like, cheers, you know, we're good. It's sending the wrong message, and that's the problem, even from the governor's office. People don't know what to do or what to believe because everybody's getting mixed messages. And don't forget, Ms. Foster, who's in charge of the vaccine rollout, Whitmer's making a fool of herself with Biden. So bad, Biden's people got to hold press conferences and say that we're not going to do whack-a-mole response by flooding Michigan with vaccine, since we all know by now this thing's going to jump somewhere else. You know that. That's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Happened before. I, I know exactly what's going to happen. But then we find out, Kyle, that we have 360,000 doses sitting on a shelf somewhere that we didn't order. Right. As, as, the, uh, as Trish Foster, who's in charge of the rollout, is in Florida. And, and, the, and you go back to the end of last week, and the governor and her team had a meeting with President Biden himself trying to convince him that uh, he, needs to, he needs to go along with her vaccine surge, this whole strategy of trying to get more vaccines to the state. And they, they're trying to get him to do that. And then, I mean, you just have to wonder if he said, well, where is, your, where is Trish Foster? Where's your COO who's in charge of this whole rollout? Oh, she's on vacation. No, she's no, she's, she, hold on, let's look at it. She's on Zoom. Ding, 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 ding. Hey kids, quiet down. Oh uh, yes, Mr. President. It's, it's, exactly. It's in the mail. Exactly. I think that's how it went. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, the COVID calypso in the back. Man. Okay, so let's do data. According to Wallet Hub, and they do pretty good studies. WalletHub.com. This is the this came out this week. The safest states during COVID-19. Okay, and they're met, and I've tried to do this myself. You all know I'm a, a data fiend. Mm -hmm. I'm crunching my, I only take the 10 most populous states, and I told you last week we're ninth. Okay, Georgia, Georgia was after us. According to Wallet Hub, they measure this, folks. Listen now transmission, positive testing, hospitalizations, death, as well as the share of eligible population getting vaccinated. This is for the whole year. Put them all together. Where do you think Michigan ranks? Oh, you, you would assume uh, at least in the middle, right? Because a lot of the other numbers seem to be in the middle. What did I tell you? 29, 30. How many times I got to tell you whenever well, you you, you're 10. doing something around here? If it's a, the worst of list, you look to the top. If it's the best of list, you look at the you bottom. Look at the bottom. Right. So in the 40s. We're 49th. <laughs> 49th in effectiveness. Oh, boy. 49th. Is it up there? Look at that. There it is. For those of you listening, we just put it up. Let's see. 49th is Jersey, right? A lot of people died in Jersey. New York's 47th. A lot of people died there. Ooh, they co-mingled the nursing homes. Woo! We're, we're 50, and Georgia's 51 because they put Washington, D.C. in there. So my calculations were correct. Georgia's worse. This is terrible, man. So what data are we following? What data could we possibly be following? And what is her plan, man? You mean what other elected official are we following? My liberal friends are pissed, right? Mm -hmm. And, and we, we got to talk about this. They're pissed. I followed you. I believe the data, that's the best thing to do. And now you're a Republican. And now that the Republicans got what they want, it's a, nah, 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 nah. Ooh, not for thee, just for me, whatever the fuck that, get rid of the phrase. We're tired of political phraseology. It's rank, it's stale, it's boring. This is real lives. It's easy. Our kids are a mess. Our economy's a mess. Our streets are a mess. Come on, man. What other data do you have? The, oh. 
Well, the date is this. You had other data, yeah. 10,000 cases. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, there were 110 deaths. Eight of these are the vital mysterious record. vital records. There's 30 deaths. 30 deaths, 10,000 cases. A year ago, it was 2,000 cases, 200 deaths. Mm-hmm. Right? So everybody knows this calculation. Hospitals are filling up with young people, but they're not dying. 90% of the people dying today are over 60. It's the same issue. Try to look out for it. But that's one, that's the people's data. Mm-hmm. I've got the polling data, and I'm quite sure Whitmer has the polling data. <laughs> Number one, this is according to the market research group. It's a name, it's a name, you know, it's, it's, it's a name firm. Whitmer's approval rating last month, about a month ago, is 52%. A year ago, way down, but yeah. It was 72%. Yeah. That's a major collapse. Okay. Here's the real one. This is the 538 website. Everybody, you, you got to go, you got to check your data. You got to do the polling. Listen to this, Kyle. This is from Epic MRA, another name polling firm. Okay. Out of 600 likely voters in Michigan, for it's say we were voting for governor today, one Republican yep. and Whitmer. Today, this was put out uh, March 2nd. The poll was conducted. February 19th through the 25th. This is before Margaritaville Gate. This is before Biden Gate and the 360,000 rotting vials. Um, Whitmer is at 46%, right? Yeah. 46% of likely would, voters would vote for if the election was today, likely voters, yeah. And 45% would go with Candace Miller, <laughs> oh who boy. used to be the Secretary of State she has be and sweating. a Congresswoman, yeah. and is currently the drain commissioner. Yeah. Of Macomb County. Like, half the state doesn't even know who she is. And it's a plus or minus... Oh, where is it? Well, you know it's probably... Probably four, four and a half, I'm guessing. That means okay. it's a dead heat. Yeah. So part of the data, Kyle, would you think, is political? I think there's no question. And, and when you're an incumbent, under 50%, you should be sweating. Yep. And again, like you said, this, this was six weeks ago. Um, Had things gotten better than they were six weeks ago? They've gotten, I think, infinitely worse. Oh, you're right, because we didn't yeah. have the explosion of the UK variant going on right now. Right. And and the Margaritaville uh, scandal, as you say, and all of that. I mean, it's just it's just gotten worse. And so and and, and the, the part about Candace Miller, it's interesting because, I mean, she she was secretary of state quite a while ago and then she was in Congress for, what, 12 years and so she's, I don't think she's really sort of a statewide name anymore, but to have her one point behind, which is basically a tie, uh, yeah, you would think the governor is now sweating, and which I think leads to why she is now pleading with people to, uh, you know, to follow her voluntary lockdowns, and she's not imposing them anymore. See, and I'll say it again, Karen, it's, uh, you, you know, Karen basically was the number two here in Detroit when we were really going through a swoon. And you try to do your best, but at least, Karen, you were consistent in what you were trying to accomplish. What advice would you give? I know somebody from the governor's office is listening to this. What well, advice you have? You know, Charlie, and I, and I say this all the time, two things. First of all, I think some of her approval rating last year was because Trump was still in office. Mm. And everybody was gassing her up because she was, you know, uh, in the media, quote unquote, standing up to Trump. So and, and people were, you know, feeding into that foolishness. There was no substance there. But on this side, attitude and performance are a reflection of leadership or lack thereof. So if your first line, you know, staff members, executives, the people that are supposed to represent and help execute your directives aren't buying in, then that's a direct reflection on a lack of leadership. You have to have buy-in. If there's any dissension in the ranks, mm. then then all of that is compromised and it and it's all for show. I mean, why, you know, it, when, 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 when an organization asks for donations, they look for internal buy-in. Do all your board members, are your staff members participating? So this is no different. And if you've got this type of breakout, you think about her husband with the boat issue, you know, they're buying into the, what is it, you know, the rules for thee but not for me. Yep. And, and that's what's happening. And that's unfortunate because there are a lot of people that are suffering because they do not have accurate information to make an informed decision. Period. It also really seemed like, uh, you know, it was all hands on deck. We got to take care of this. We all have to do our part. And now it's kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know oh, what to do. I'm just going to do whatever Where's I Como? want. Where's Como? I don't yeah. know what to do now. Yeah. 
Karen is, is known as a ball bus. I remember that era specifically. You're not on board. You're gone. How come nobody's gone? Look, here. how come nobody's gone? <laughs> Folks, it was a year ago. This week, it's an anniversary. The, the, the governor does a press conference. Dogs on Kyle and I for doing the job. Right. Mm -hmm. And says there have never been travel restrictions in Michigan. There just haven't been. <laughs> OK, it's a I don't know about the reporters sitting there on Zoom because you're sitting in your underpants making tea, not listening to this. It was the year anniversary yeah. when we couldn't go to our cottage. Remember, she got busted for that. Her husband. Her husband did, yeah. Again, there's a pattern here. We couldn't get seeds. You weren't actually allowed to cross the street to see your neighbor. You weren't. Yeah. Couldn't groom your dog. Remember that? Everybody's dogs walking around raggedy. You couldn't do anything. It was a travel restriction. Of course, not for your husband because those, those leaves needed to get raked. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you got a nice joint up north, you hire the local redneck to do it. Yeah. You inject some money into the local economy. Everybody knows that. That way they don't bust any of your shit over the winter. That's just the way it goes, man. You don't know that. You ain't well, from Michigan. And, and to Karen's point, um, you go back to 2019, 2020. She loved to be the victim of Donald Trump. She loved, you know, she played up this whole that woman from Michigan. She loved to blame him. And, you know, he's he's keeping us from getting PPE and all of that sort of stuff. She loved to be the victim and and have him to blame. And that's why things were going poorly in Michigan. You just reminded well, me. Well, she doesn't have that anymore. Right. Now it's Joe Biden. And she's pleading with Joe Biden to do this vaccine surge. And he goes, nah, no, we're not going to do that. I forgot about uh, somebody forgot to file the FEMA papers to get our PPE. And uh, Remember that? Mm -hmm. He's not sending help. Well, you didn't officially ask for it. So it's the, look, again, difficult job. I, I'm, I'm trying to help you, Madam Governor. Look, here's the thing. Who came up with the secret deal for the last head of Health and Human Services? Bad look. Your number two and your number three are taking trips to Margaritaville. Bad look. The unemployment is still fucked up. You don't have anybody competent. The nursing home choices you made, that's still the big one. And the count and the data. Who the fuck? She you know would send a message, Charlie, by not dismissing you know, the behavior of her two uh, appointees. That's the first thing, because she's she's saying that it's okay. If she really wanted to send a message, somebody would be out. Right. Hey, Kyle, do you, what is your opinion? Do you think Trish Foster and Elizabeth Hertel, are they just pure incompetent or do they not really believe what they're saying? Are they just dumb or are they negligent? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a no-win question. Um, I think they're pure It, it seems to me like oh? uh, they're in over their heads. Um, but you would think that there would be some accountability. I mean, if you had someone like Trish Foster, I mean, we had that story, we had her dead to rights. I mean, there was no, no disputing the facts and they lash out at us and they, they attack Breitbart. They, you know, all the stuff that we've, we've said previously, you, you would think that there would be some accountability and they, they would set a tone that they're not going to tolerate that sort of thing. But for whatever reason, she's not doing that, which then again seeds uh, or it, it, it feeds into cynicism mm. that all of her orders and all of her, you know, finger wagging. People aren't going to believe that anymore and they're not going to do it. And we're 49th data, data. That's the thing. And again, I have to sue for data. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help you. Look, I, I'm not looking at the nursing homes, folks, to, to stick it in your eye. It's what people want. What I'm trying to do, and our next guest coming up is going to tell you, we can, if we're honest, we can address the issues that face the society and not have to live through this again. That's what I'm about. So you can save, look, stop with the Hitler. I say it every week. Get her! <laughs> Get her! No! 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 You make a decision. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And Kyle, I got a, a lot of issues with Breitbart. I knew Andrew. I, I keep his number still. God mm -hmm. rest his soul. You know what I mean? I got a yeah. lot of issues with that place over the years. But I wanted people to meet you. you, you does he sound like a raving lunatic to you? A white <laughs> nationalist? A misogynist? A racist? Or is it? does he seem to be, you know, one of the hoi polloi? 
Remember who, who you have last week? Richard Wolf. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You like Richard. He was good. Love Richard. He's fucking yeah. great. Mm -hmm. He's a socialist. He's a pinko. <laughs> but half the, you know, like most of the shit he's talking, the problems, I agree with him. That's what we're about. So, Governor, fix the shit. And if it was me, somebody's head would be on oh, a yeah. platter, man. Got that right. Should have oh, already had Boom. Mm -hmm. They Fuck. would be out. <laughs> so, you, yeah. mm -mm -mm. Kyle, I know you got it up. Uh, get, tell us your, your program, uh, your Twitter handle, all that. Uh, you, you know, sure. I think people should check you out. Sure. Uh, you can go to thekyleolsonshow.com. You can find episodes. I have a, a weekend one-hour radio show that I also do as a podcast. Um, you can find my writing at, at breitbart.com, or you can find me on uh, Twitter and Parler. It's Kyle Olson 4 Parler. Wow. See, he is right wing. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk. You, you kind of slipped that in there. You Twitter sending late night love notes to Trump, are you, bro? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you guys gonna storm the Capitol? What do you make of that? The storming of the Capitol, right or wrong? I thought it was shameful and disgusting, mm. and and anybody involved should be held accountable. Boom. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Oh, logical. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, brother. Uh, really, really good work. Uh, I'm glad Thank we you. hooked up. And um, hey, hey what, what town is your radio sta show play in? I'm in. Uh, I'm on 14 stations. It's in um, Flint, I think, and Kalamazoo. Um, 14 stations are on the state. Flint Friday. Uh, excuse me. Saturday at 5 p.m. Flint, I think. <laughs> this is a guy really involved, hey. really involved with his career. Puts it out there. Go to right, his website man. and figure it out. Who listens to the radio anymore? It's all about podcasts. Yeah, it right? is. That's right. You forgot there's one other place where they're they're hearing your work, bro. Right here. Right here. Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, I, I hope you do well with your lawsuit. And it's unfortunate that you have to do that. And the news and the free press and the state journal and everywhere else is just sort of letting letting her do what she's doing and let her let her you know letting her get away with it yeah right there we do the work here oh by the way for me listen to me you keep sending me this stuff ask trump about me okay uh yeah i was told to back off him y'all remember that ask snyder about me ask schwarzenegger about me those guys were afraid of me mm -hmm. right ask giuliani about me i have to kick that dude's ass i can go on uh-uh you got the chair Guys and gals like Kyle and um, Karen and me, we come. That's part of it. It's keeping it clean. Now you're in the shit. Thanks, brother. We're going to let you go. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck, Kyle. See ya. Thanks. Reasonable dude, everybody? Sure. Yeah, no, she fucked up on this, and she refuses to admit that she fucked up. You know what, though, Charlie? I'm going to tell you this. First of all, this is none of this is partisan. You know, it's not it's not Republican or Democrat. It's right or wrong. But if she really wanted to redefine her brand, she'd fire those people yep. immediately because she would say that that is unacceptable. And it would send a message, a very firm, deliberate leadership, and maybe give some folks pause to reconsider whether or not, you know, to continue to support her. I'm hey, telling you, listen, you got to do something. I'm telling Governor, Liz Karen gets paid for this. She's been, she been in this game longer than you. Hey, you calling me old, Charlie? <laughs> oh, hell no. You were a child prodigy. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hell no. You look, wait a minute. Where, where's the uh, girl in the plastic bubble shot? <laughs> oh, it looks beautiful. Look how thin that, look how thin <laughs> that silhouette is. <laughs> she does, right, how, how is it in the bubble, Karen? It's pretty nice. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm in here by myself and I like it. You sound so good and I just feel you and it's Except like. to access the bubble, I have to run upstairs, outside, around down the stairs. And you get winded. So, I, have a, well, I, get I have winded a standing up. I have a private door, a private yeah. microphone, everything. Two cameras in here. I'm good. <laughs> okay, it's Tina with Hey, Tina, you there? I'm oh, here, Charlie. Hey. Okay. Let me, let me. Let me introduce you here. Let me first of all uh, give, give me give me Maurice Davis, please. Uh, this Tina appearance on the No Bullshit News Hour is brought to you by the smooth stylings of Maurice Davis in support of Luke Nowacki. So you, got, you need money. You need money to do stuff. Government needs money to do stuff. Everybody out there needs money to do stuff. You got to make your money grow. Got to. Right? You got to get a strategy. You all know it. 
Luke Nowacki, Pinnacle Wealth. Grow your assets. Get on the right track. Call them. 248-663-4748. Annuities. Retirement account. All of it. It's very confusing now. Wall is the one. It's a good guy. He'll even pour you a drink. Uh, virtually, you can come to the office. You can socially distance. Hey, uh, I got my taxes done. Oh, did you? I get something back. Do yeah. you really? Well, it's mine. I mean, it's not like the government give me anything. Well, are you mad that you're getting something back? I always get mad when I get something back. Well, I, no. Now I'm, I'm taking it to Luke. Yeah. yeah? I understand what you're saying. I want to give the government my money, and they don't give me it back with interest. I'd rather keep it. Yeah, I could have given it to Luke at the beginning of the year. That's what happens when you work for yourself in a basement behind a plastic. <laughs> Lower, Lower level. level. No, 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 no. Now you're behind a piece of plastic, Karen. Drop the pretenses. <laughs> You're in a fucking tool room. Oh, no, I'm not. This is the second studio. Studio oh. B. Oh, studio B <laughs> in the lower level. I love you. Ridiculous. Oh, studio. Karen over there in Studio B. B. We now take you to Studio B. Karen, who should they call? They should call Luke Nowacki. That's it. 248-663-4748. Like we've been saying for years. <laughs> no, no. You know, a couple episodes. <laughs> We've been telling people to call Luke and Wacky forever. Before everything happened, we said, no matter how much money you have or how much money you don't have, figure out how to make the most of it. We've been saying that well, for no, a long I, time. What I'm saying is, like, Luke might be listening and going, yeah, wait a minute. Well, if you would have called Luke a year ago, you'd be up, what, 70% about now? I know, but, like, Luke's 16? like, nobody's calling. Why the fuck am I supporting this program? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> They're calling. All right, Luke. <laughs> Thanks, someone, brother. Someone call Luke for us. Yes, yeah, somebody call. Not just the ladies who saw him stand up. <laughs> yeah. Call Luke. Everybody listen. Call Luke for a standing <laughs> conversation. <laughs> ladies, write this down. 248-663-4748. Oh, this is getting bad. <laughs> Boy, Alliance Associates, Inc. brings to you Nurse Tina. Y'all remember Nurse Tina? Yes. She was back here blowing the whistle. What was going on in those nursing homes? During the COVID, we're still in the COVID, but nobody's looking into the nursing homes. Hi, Tina. Hi, Charlie. Um, it was really sad when you called me. I, I mean, I, you're you're distraught. I mean, it's the older people. We're supposed to be taking care of the older population, and the older population they they they're not being taken care of, and it's sad. And I'm really tired of being a part of it because they are being abused and neglected, and they blaming it on COVID. I'm, <laughs> I don't want to keep blaming COVID for staff not coming in. Why they not coming in? It's just too much going on for our elderly population. Now, you were, you were telling me, like, you're working in the demented ward in one of these places. You're a traveling nurse. You're like the firefighter, the specialist. They, you get sent where, where it's needed. So you're in a place, and they put you in the dementia ward. Is this correct? Yeah, I did dementia in um, one of our lo local nursing homes. Well, go on. Tell us about it. What'd you see? Were they getting fed? Were they getting changed? <laughs> our older people eating bologna sandwiches, uh, peas, the mechanical soft. It's just, it's really deplorable conditions. When you don't have housekeeping coming in, how do you sanitize for Corona? When you don't have staff how do you pass meds and how do you toilet these dementia people? How do you care for their needs? It's not, their needs are not being taken care of. So if they're not dying again from Corona, they're dying from depression, hurt, mistreatment, people being left in shit for hours, pissing hours, people not going to the bathroom, they falling, they not taking care of our elderly population, especially those people that can't speak for themselves. Maybe if the governor went in one time, for a few hours, she could see firsthand what was going on, and maybe she would have a change of heart. Yeah. Now, so you're in the dementia ward. How many? How many? Basically, lost souls are you know they're living human beings. Our elders. How many were on the ward that night? Forty five. Two seen as one nurse. <sighs> what? Say it again. Impossible. You would think that that's impossible. Forty five people. <laughs> what is being done? It is being done. Well, let me, let That's me, how let me, you know the care is not being provided because how can three people take care of 45 people? Isn't there supposed to be some state oversight in terms of making sure that these facilities are clean, that they're that the ratio for, um, you know, support staff and patient? I mean, 
aren't there guidelines or is this just all random and haphazard? No, there are state guidelines. Do you hear me? There are state guidelines. Now you tell me this. If this if, if a family member or a patient, we got a patient patient is um alert. And that patient got a cell phone and he called in the state. So when the state pop up and they over the over the microphone on the speaker saying, Charlie, or they giving a cold word for everybody to be on their P's and Q's, the state not gonna find out nothing. You hear mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's, Tipped off. It's, it's it's levels to it, it's tricks. They've been going ah. It's been going on a very long time. Now, criminal charges. I'm talking about criminal charges. Now, I, I went through all the reports that the federal investigators were looking at during the height of COVID, right? Th- they were active, but I didn't see very many, almost none, really, for the hubs. I didn't see any in-person visitation by the state. I know they were, they were doing it by phone, weren't they? Mm-hmm. It was very rare. I can tell you, Corona been going on since last year. I can say on a off the top of my head, I've probably been in 15 nursing homes in Michigan, and I probably only caught the state again, I'm telling you, one time. Wow. Out of those 15 nursing homes, are they private, are they state-run, or can you walk in, you just can't tell the difference because there's zero oversight? You know what? Um, you can't tell the difference because it's zero oversight, but by me being in the field for so long, I can just about, I can you know, I can Google that information, whether they ran yeah. out of Medicare some of them venture off. Some of them change the names. You, I guess you can't tell until you go in. No, I know what's going on because I see when the federal government asks for the data from the nursing homes, right, from the public nursing homes, there's only like two that are actually public. They're private. The, the hedge fund yeah. companies have these things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But, to, but it's still federal money and the state is responsible for inspecting them, right? That's, it all funnels through the state. Come the fuck on. With those 45 people and three adults, I, I hope you were all trying to work hard. What did you do with the old people that, with dementia? Did you narc them up? Well, some nurses do narc those people up. But me personally, if a per- it's, it's really the residents' right, no matter how, what state that they are in, to refuse or whatever. It's, it's hard to, it's, it's whatever the facility protocol is. If the facility saying knock them up, you knock them up. <laughs> mm. Well, they have dementia and it's illegal to put them on that stuff without, uh, you know, a, a medical treatment plan. I so- have seen a case, the man, it, it was on another unit. I was somewhere and he was going through behavior and he went through these behaviors and they doped him up. And when he woke up the next morning, when I say this man told told the whole room up because they doped him up while he was having a spell. So when he woke up the next morning, you hear me? From my understanding, he told the whole room up. So they they are doping the patients up. These people they need to make the families be able to come see these people. Looking at them through the windows, not getting it because they can put them people clothes on and, and wash their face and make them look like something. They want their family. They want to be loved. They want to be cared for. They want a, a meal. They want a real normal meal. How many old people, you know, for real eating bologna sandwiches? Are they starving, Tina? And are people hungry? <laughs> are people hungry, losing weight? I mean, they can tell off the weight. the certain things that they know. These people are not eating. They're not even getting the basic need like somebody passing them water. And they got them doped up like the bears at the zoo. They're barely getting showers. Fuck. See, they already only get, before Corona, they was already only maybe getting a shower twice a week, if that. Twice a week? Oh, oh, yeah. oh in, in the it. hubs, in the hubs where we dis- where the governor and her people decided these are going to be the special COVID places. Yeah, you could see reports of abuse all over these places and infection write-ups and, right, penalties, yep. one star, two star. This is what we picked. So and again. Infections are coming in because guess what? Housekeeping not coming to work. Who cleaning? Who sanitizing? Who putting the soap in the dispensers? Who passing out tissue? Who doing laundry? These people are getting, some people getting white with pillowcases and sheets. Fuck. They don't got nobody to come in and wash shit. <laughs> and an administrator, a charge nurse. Now, you know, that's an RM on your LPN. She'll look at you and she'll say, she'll tell that, that Cena, you better make it happen. You better make it work. Mm. Um, how is that person that's lower up under us supposed to feel? They ain't coming to work. Nobody want to treat nobody grandma like that. Yeah, man. Wow. So here's the point, folks. 
We got a big fucking problem. And remember, they're getting the shots now, right? So we just stick them back in the dark and don't worry about it. Well, I can't now. I, now that I know, I can't. And you shouldn't either. And, and listen to teach. She's actually one of the most deep. Y'all need to start going up yeah. there. Y'all need to start knocking on doors. I know y'all seen the girls that was protesting when it first started. You, you hear me? And they was outside and they was telling y'all how they were short stuff. Y'all need to start getting them people. They need to start coming back to the front because if it's money and y'all got aid and y'all can help, why keep making the old people suffer? It's our older population that's suffering that I'm seeing because guess what? If they're in rehab, they're going to talk some shit. You're not going to leave me in this shit. You're not going to feed me bologna sandwiches all this motherfucking week. Do you hear me? Somebody need to step up and take up for our old people because they are in a demented state. They are used to somebody coming in, pulling them, forcing them to go to bed, forcing them to get undressed. And they only doing this because ain't nobody coming in getting them in trouble. There's I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. I'm not knocking nobody up. I'm not forcing nobody to do nothing. Hey, it is what it is. There's clearly not enough nurses to help out. Is it far worse, you know, in the last uh, 14 months, you know, COVID time than it was before? Or was this a steady decline because they just don't want to do it? It's a little bit of both. It's a steady decline. People don't want to do it. They are overworked. They overstressed. They not getting breaks. Don't nobody want to come in and abuse these people because they basically making you forcing you to be with the shit and don't nobody want to be with the shit. Right. Now I'm going to say this. I just want that to sink in. I'm going to tell you one thing and then we're going to go and then you're going to go back to court. But here, folks, the infrastructure plan, right? That one with yeah, everything. Yeah. 400 billion, billion with a B, four, one half a trillion, 40% of a trillion dollars in this plan is to go to make long-term care better. This, uh, this is Vox, the headline I'm reading here. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, though. Biden's plan to invest $400 billion to make long-term care cheaper is really popular. See, that's a problem. That's a partisan headline as well. <laughs> you spend... $400 billion to make it cheaper, that's stupid. It's not cheaper. We're going to spend more to fix it. But here's the thing, Tina. Here's, I want your expertise. You read this or you read about the plan, there's no specifics about how we're going to spend $400 billion. What's two things that they should do, Tina, that we should ask for? Invest in staff and invest in those older people. So we're going to invest higher wages. I don't know higher how wages. We, hey, did you hear? Did you hear this? Remember, they was giving us like a maybe an extra two or three dollars. You should have seen how fast they cut them two or three dollars out. You know, for us working in the COVID. When something went on, they took that money back so fast. It's crazy. So oh, the hazard yeah, pay, extra yeah. money, extra money. And then one physical thing we could do. It would it be the circulation system would it be what would it be to to make them better the only thing that i can see right now is letting them people let the families come in and see what's going on well that doesn't cost any money yeah just let let the families come in and see what's going on and but, we can work from there but that's what i wanted bring, to point out that's what i wanted to point out though tina is that a lot of times families are busy and they rely or trust on the, the, the facility to take care of their elder family members. There, in my opinion, also has to be some elevated concern and, and connectivity from the family to make sure that what's supposed to happen is happening. And if it's not, to start, like you say, it, you know, raise some, raise some hell and make some calls um, because it's not happening. But if I'm calling, am I saying it right, Katie? If, if I'm playing a role like I'm taking care of your mom and I'm assuring you that I'm taking care of your mom and you having them Zoom visits and seeing her at the window and she got on that, that nice outfit you just bought her two weeks, mm -hmm. then guess what? My mama doing good. I no, I, they need to get the people back in there where they spending hours. They're seeing how to snap the staff moving, seeing how the patients reacting to them. Got you. Okay. The $400 billion is aimed to at getting um, treatment in home. Is it? Uh, would you rather treat a senior in home or in one of these facilities? Trina, I would rather treat it. I would rather for them to be at home. We're told it's cheaper, right? My my point yes, here, I, yeah, like home visits. You sure, can, you know, you can, home, right? But 
you know, I, I'm going to need a little bit more. You know, remember we, we had Gretchen on about the wards of the state. Yeah. She agrees. Studies show. I'd like to see a little bit more. This is what I'm saying, folks. No bullshit right in the middle. Don't blow a bunch of money we don't have on a plan that doesn't fucking work. But we know that this is where we need competent people to be looking. Amen. Because the pandemic hit them hard and ruined us all, even if you don't care about them. So one, one thing is it came back to bite us. We threw old people away. It came back to get us all. Number two, you don't know what the future is. You might be in there. I would hate, hate to hear about you, the things Tina's telling me. Think about that. All doped up, not knowing where you're at, and laying in your own waist, and they come around to bologna sandwich once in a while. No way. Or a peanut butter and jelly, for real. I'm hungry. Half of no. that didn't sound bad. No, they're talking bologna sandwich and peas. No, you're I'm, not. Well, I'm tell, listen, Tina, no, this, this peanut either. butter. Appetite is done. Is it, what's the peanut butter? Is it the creamy or does it have the, the peanuts <laughs> in it? Charlie. It's creamy. I know it. <laughs> it is the creamy one. Well, you know they ain't. <laughs> better be <laughs> Jeff. He, the peanuts are extra. <laughs> you know they send them old people peanuts. <laughs> Especially if they're sitting in their Well, Tina, cells. let me say this. Thank you for doing what you do. I mean, I know you've been on the show before, and I can hear the level of concern that you have. And just, you know, it is noticed and appreciated. Sorry that it's not more uh, rampant uh, amongst, you know, your colleagues. But certainly, you know, we appreciate what you do. Thank you for that. Thank you. As long as we got people speaking out like y'all, then maybe one day we'll get a resolution. There, oh, there's, a, there's a ton and hey, y'all, you know, I mean, I talk to a lot of people in the industry and more and more every day. And if I haven't gotten back to you, I will, you know, I, because besides that, I got to check out who I'm talking to. You know what I mean? And if somebody called me up or referred to me and I, I just take a word for it. Don't, don't work like that around here. It doesn't. Okay. Thanks, Tina. Talk to you later. Take care. A little bit of news. Then we're going to go to red, right? The news is brought to you by, here's the news, how financial. Here's the news Hall of Fine Financial wants you to know, right? You can get it in the threes, folks. You can get that refi. You can save probably two months of payments just by refinancing. And then you're going to lower your note, right? Do it now. Super simple. You did it? Give him a call. You did it? Yeah. Yeah. What Huge. happened? Did you call? Did you go on the website? I called. Okay. Because they call right back. Okay, they call right back. Unlike did, when you call me and I don't ever call back. Do they assign you somebody? Uh, yeah, very competent, too. You deal with one person. Very simple. Okay, uh, was it a refi or were you buying something? Refi. Okay. Mm -hmm. and did, Do it all through email. Did you have to get appraised or anything? Uh, well, no. no. I mean, nobody inside my house, no. Okay, it's a virtual appraisal. Exactly. Got them? It, it, come on, mm -hmm. folks. Makes sense. It's a no-brainer. Yep, it, it is. And, you know, Bob really said is. about, yeah, okay, there you go. Hall Financial's fast, and they do all the heavy lifting. Call 248-308-5000 or go to davidhallmortgage.com or call 248-308-5000. NMLS number 1467435. All right, quick news, right? I just want to bust through this. And Dana Nessel putting out a press release. Attorney General Nessel prevails. Give me breaking news. Oh, okay. It's a big one. <laughs> Attorney General. There's no bullshit news hour. <laughs> At this hour, last week, AG Nessel prevails in tethers for Wolverine Watchmen. Yes. What? Yes, the brothers. Remember the twin brothers, uh, yeah. Michael and William Knoll? Remember them? Yep. The yes. ones that looked like Mark? <laughs> no, hey. they did not. <laughs> okay, well. well yeah, it, they did, kind of. No. The, the ones that were going to be part of the plot to kidnap uh, Gretchen Whitmer, right? Well, they're going to be let out. Their bond's reduced. <laughs> On a tether. Right? There'll, there'll be no home arrest, no travel restrictions. <laughs> but breaking news. <laughs> travel restrictions. <laughs> A.G. Dana Nessel prevails in tethers for Wolverine Watchmen. So the judge, Stepka, indicated that while he would rescind the curfew and house arrest portion of the bond condition, they will have to wear an ankle bracelet. So good work on this diabolical plot. I don't know if that deserves a press release, but whatever, if it makes oh, no. her happy. What is that? You mean... You led the world. Look, let's face it. It's a press release to remind everybody. Hey, remember that kidnapping uh, charges? That they're still out there. Let's be honest. Like, look, it's, it's just blowing yourself. This was some assholes up on social media. Oh, get kidnapped! You know, assholes. By the yeah, way, yeah. fucking tyrant, tyrant. And 
Two weeks later, two FBI agents are undercover and two of the guys are snitches and they knew all along. Yeah. And now, wait a minute, what's with this? What are these, these guys get to walk around? They get to go to the bar? They can go to Indiana if they want to? Yeah. Due hey, process. We, hey, we got an ankle break. Yeah. Can they go to Florida? <laughs> exactly. No, no, tra- there's travel restrictions. So I guess- Is there really? I guess they can go. Is there really? For thee and not for ye. I think the travel restrictions in Michigan means you have to stay in Michigan or Florida or Muscle Shoals. <laughs> Right? <laughs> One of the three places. Boy, Breaking boy. news. <laughs> Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson to remove 170,000 names from the qualified voter list. About time. Okay, it's good. Not quite sure of the process, but that's good. <laughs> so quickly. Again. Uh, quickly, let me just look for the most obvious. William T. Bradley, 118 years old, <laughs> died about three decades ago, and yet he voted mistakenly because his son's got the same name he voted the son was told what don't worry we got it taken care of just a mix up right sure breaking news <laughs> god bless that old dead guy he's still on the voting rolls i told you <laughs> if you want to live forever register to vote in detroit <laughs> <laughs> madam secretary this is the first guy you take off okay finally man we got we just got a lot of breaking news <laughs> <laughs> Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Oh, this one. Jesus. With this bright one. It wasn't an accident. Police in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. Dante Wright was met with aggression and violence. I am done with those who condone government funded murder. No more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. Charlie. Even Bernie Sanders tell you, get take a... Is that helpful? No. I wondered how many people in the 13th district uh, agree with that, because I would bet you it's very, very small. That Her constituents, so- who she's supposed to represent, I don't... I think they would want more policing of that those neighborhoods. Well, I think that people need to stop with the, with the talking points every time this happens. I mean, everything... I, I mean, if you see... Nothing's changing... You know, there was another uh, shooting in Minneapolis. I mean, then this kid in Chicago. I mean, nothing changes. It's always the same formula. There's the march. There's the memorial. There's the call for justice. There's the, if there's a trial, then there's an acquittal. And everybody goes about their way until the next time. So, like, we're not doing anything. We're walking in place. The things that we're doing are performative. It may look good, read well, and make people feel good for the moment, but we need to really look and peel back at the things that are, that, that, what, what did I say the other day? We will continue to repeat what we don't repair, and that's what's happening. Well, look, can everybody just stop with the, with the drop lines? Mm. What, what are we talking about then? What retreat? Look, this is, a, this is a racist country with a racist past. Exactly. Why would you think the police are any different than what's going on with everybody else? So what are we talking about? Can we, what are we going to, defund the police? I love my guy in blue. Oh, come on, man. I want specificity. Well, Let's start moving somewhere. It's almost like she doesn't know how to present a law, even though she's a legislator, right? She put it on Twitter. Do you know? Here's she's one person that could put a bill out there. What is the continuum of force? What does that even mean? No, you don't know. She's, yeah. You, well, who look look in, look in your very own town with, with a police force of two thousand people? You just put it on their back, right? The people aren't getting anything anyway. You're not helping with that. I don't. How come the only representative I actually see doing anything around here is Debbie Dingle? Where's St- Senator Stabenow? It's a great question. Where's Senator Peters? Where's the whole congressional delegation? Yeah. Where's anybody? At least she's doing the meat and potato stuff, getting around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was, well, it's easier to be on Twitter, I guess. Jesus, ridiculous. But that's you know that that's what that's what gets you know the people going, for lack of a better term. People, you know, whether you get a retweet, everybody looks for validity in likes and retweets and posts and that kind of stuff. I mean that that has become the new approval uh, uh, the new approval stamp or stamp of approval. Look, you look at the kid in Chicago. What's his last name? I forgot. Uh, Toledo. Ad, uh, Ad, Ad, Toledo. Is it Adam Toledo? Adam, Toledo. Adam yeah. Toledo. Toledo. <laughs> Toledo. Toledo, yeah. 
Okay, 13-year-old, him him and a allegedly uh, older guy messing around with a gun, you know, late at night, boom, 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 boom. Chase arrest the, the older guy. And then they chased the, the kid. And they were saying, hey, man, he had a gun in his hand. We told him to put him up. He wouldn't. He, the video's out. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a gun in his hand. Even he, if he ran with a gun, it wasn't in his hand. And, he put and his, his hands hand were up. up. Yep. That's sure some did. bullshit. But Charlie, you've got people that are, they're too afraid. And I understand, you know, we live in a very violent society. I get it. But if in fact you are afraid of the people that you are out to protect, then you do not need to be a police officer. And if you again, don't Karen, know. And, and then again, Karen, who knows? You know, the question is, I don't even want to go to state of mind. I mean, maybe you're not afraid. Maybe you're a racist. Maybe you are a murderer. It's possible. Hey, in some cases, that's been true. That's true. And if you do not know the difference between a taser and, and, a, and, a, and a weapon, you do not need to be a cop. If you're afraid of people that don't look like you, if you don't like people that don't look like you, you don't need to be a police officer. There are officers that don't fit any of that, that go out every day and really try to do a good job and fight the narrative otherwise. But Jesus Christ, if, if this isn't for you, you know, go work at a 7-Eleven. Yeah, but see, I don't get why all of a sudden some vast majority of the police are being looked at like this. What we have a problem with is the police in the unions and, and the powers that be Protecting not them. weeding out these assholes. Yeah, that's true. So let's not even go. Come on, man. Everybody wants good, professional police. And how do you get them and train them and find them? You must invest in them, like the nursing homes. What are we doing in this country? I don't have that answer. I know. But I wish I did. No, it seems like no one has that answer. Oh, fuck. Well, then roll up your sleeves and let's go. Instead of tweeting about it. Tina had an answer. Yeah. You got to pay a little more. I know every solution is paying. Yeah. When you're paying somebody 12 bucks an hour to look after 45 demented people. Unacceptable. Come on. But it goes back to doing the right thing, Charlie. Like I said before, people need to do what they're supposed to do. They need to be paid for what they do. They need to be. Do, they need to do what they're elected to do. And at the end of the day, if they don't know what to do, they need to do the right thing. Like right. That was a lot of dues. <laughs> a lot of it's not doo doo though. I like that. No one doo doo. You do what you do. <laughs> I'm serious, Charlie. I mean, this isn't brain surgery. It's really not that complicated. But you've been through it, Karen. Man, really trying to reconfigure yes. a busted place and. It's almost impossible to do because it. Because people don't want to work their way out of a job. They believe if they solve the problem that they're brought in to resolve, that that eliminates them. And so let's kick the can. Let's get a committee. Let's talk about it. But let's not really do anything. Charlie, we got 70,000 nonprofit organizations in this state. How many problems have we still been working on for the last 50 years? Okay, but you know, I mean, nonprofit, you know what that's about, no, too. I'm I mean, saying, but I'm, I'm talking anything. about, I'm talking about government? the fucking government. Everything, we Charlie. Keep Changing parties and figureheads, and one thing's always consistent. I'm the political parties and the bureaucracy. Why aren't you in the nursing homes? I'm saying that we've got enough entities, organizations, institutions, and inst individuals that pledge and pretend to be addressing problems that never go away. Hi, Karen. How are you? Charlie, don't come through my... Don't come... <laughs> Hey, come on, Charlie, we got to fit. I have to go to the restroom. We don't have a restroom in here. I need to upgrade down here. We need a restroom. <laughs> now. Princess. Charlie just knocked, well, I just go into knocked on the bubble no. and gave her a heart attack. Okay. We need to upgrade. Call, uh, you know, Hall Financial. and That's a working man's Drew, urinal is yeah. the utility. Yeah, I'm not using it. Or call ADR that. and have them pull well, it. Speaking of ADR, <laughs> Detroit Red is live out in the radioactive fields of Detroit. And uh, his appearance brought to you by ADR Consultants. Simple folks. They're the ones you call when you need to get something done right. And on time and on budget. Like getting those fields fucking cleaned up. Should probably call them, Mr. Mayor. Hmm? Hmm? You having issues with the city? Zoning? Permits? Some people are, yeah. Just all that. All the nonsense. The stuff we're talking about. Right? All the bullshit. How to get it. Yeah, look. You're busy trying to put your business plan together. Then you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Ah oh, man, we're in with the county. Duh, these fucking grubbers. God damn, what do they do? You call ADR. He likes that shit. <laughs> Better him than me, man. He's a bold ass power lifter from Jersey. That's <laughs> what is. you're getting. Yeah. The guy knows his stuff. He does. Call him, Barry Ellen Chuck, for a free consultation. 248-318-9424. Right? On time. Ethical. On budget. Discreet. 
Well, say that with some. Come on, Karen. What are you doing? Say it with some energy. On budget. That's, no. Give me. Give me. You know, on like budget. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Have them check <laughs> out is, your bubble. This isn't a one nine hundred. You know, where people sit behind the curtain. Yeah, and you like the dream calls. woman. You like the dream woman. <laughs> Come home. Well, hey, now, you know, I used to get teased and people said, you know, Karen's really the man behind the curtain. So maybe now I am the woman <laughs> behind the curtain. And then she's like this. Hey, honey, we're on budget. <laughs> Especially no, with that uh, mic silhouette. Love to hear that. <laughs> I got some takeout from that new sushi place and we're on budget. <laughs> wow. I mean, look at that silhouette. <laughs> if you have a dirty mind. 248-318-9424. Mention the no BS news and tell Barry Ellen Tuck you need someone to fix your shit. Now. We got red out there in the oven mitts, the gas mask, the Trivex suit, and some Johnny Cash boots. He's doing what he can. It's a low-budget operation. <laughs> but he's out there to report on this. The Detroit Land Bank Authority and the Sim, uh, city's demolition department, right, wasted time and resources on demolition holes that they knew to be poison. When I say poison, yep. contaminated with unacceptable levels of lead, mercury, selenium, chromium, etc. Wow. And there's at least 80 of these. It's so bad there's chemicals I don't even know what the hell they are. At least 80 the treasury department that brought these grand juries and they're still working brought it to the inspector general of Detroit. Not only that, in these cases of this topsoil that they didn't tell anybody about didn't tell the residents. Karen, they didn't tell you. No, not at okay, all. Okay, they didn't tell you. In 11 cases, they drilled down below the topsoil to see what they put in there. And in all of those cases, unacceptable. Again. Now, why doesn't the city go look at all of them? Because the one that sold them the crap to put below the topsoil was city sanctioned. Mm. Meaning they weren't meeting specs. This is an abdication. You've known, Mayor, uh, we've been going on how many years here? I don't know, and you don't know, how many of these the feds are going to come asking for. So, without any further delay, live from the east side, Detroit Red. Go ahead, brother. What do we got? What do you got for us? Well, I'm over here at one of the uh, Chernobyl Detroit dump sites. <laughs> Yeah, because of much bullshit as they got in the soil. Can my camera person show the soil here? You can look at the soil and see. This is not like no normal soil. It looks like they got bits of ground up concrete and other bullshit in there. Come here, follow me. There ain't no grass. So that is at the beginning of what is basically five of these fields side by side. We're going to point up the block here. You can see there's still houses up the block here. And then if we look over here, it's still houses that's inhabited behind us. And now we're going to walk down to show you all these fields. Follow me here. This is how much it is, is poison. This is approximately five houses plus two lots across the street. Okay, I think I seen a three-eyed raven fly through here from <laughs> Game of Thrones uh, about a few minutes ago. And to be quite honest, it's just real bullshit. Brother Doodoo, you know what's going on here. It's residents stay here. You can't, this is the only way you can see your kids out to even be safe in this garden. You know what they were expected? So what, what, what Reds uh, make sure it's clear, that's five consistent lots that we know from the, the, the government report is soil that does not meet the clean standards for children and adults and dogs and ravens, right? See how big that is? Yeah. So that's that's five lots. Wow. Okay. The city wow. has torn down fifteen thousand. Imagine that times three thousand. We don't know. And I want to point this out. This is one of our shorter city blocks, and this is damn near the entire block poison with garbage topsoil, and we don't know what the hell the backfield could possibly be. Okay, now here, here's the funny thing, Red. Uh, these reports, you can find them online. City of Detroit Inspector General's Office reports. There's been a raft of these in the last month. Another one, another one is the stuff underneath the topsoil has come from the highway. They took, oh. the, they took the contaminated highway dirt and threw it in the ground. I've been reporting that forever. Yeah. In one case I know of from 
the Army Corps of Engineers, the federal government's report, they actually ground up the highway itself and threw it in there, Detroit. How do you like that? You want to talk about some systematic racism, the way a, a system fails the people and harms them. It's this. I mean, in my opinion, it should be some type of charges. You, This is almost bigger than Flint, actually. Because you've contaminated the soil and told nobody. In this anything. case, in this case, you know, they've been, case. they've been looking for years. How big is this? If you found 11 holes with highway dirt in it and then it's not acceptable, how many are we going to look at? Why did you stop? You should have kept going. <laughs> Holy shit. The first 11. Shh, shh. The people don't deserve this. Let me point this out. These five here. In total, six, seven in this one little block is off of the list of 89 tested and 81 came back, failed for mercury, arsenic, and the other shit you said that sound like a good strand of weed at the dispenser. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> and again, this is one contractor. That's what the city will say. They, they came up. We notified Treasury. Fine. But again, how many stories did I do? And 18, and 17, and 16. Like, there's so many of these things. We don't know where the dirt came from. You know it, I know it, and the feds really know it. Do you think they went away? Here's the word I got. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're hot and heavy, and some big shoes are to drop. So, media, please care. Care about the community. Do these stories, because I don't want to see you in the courthouse in six months pretending like you were looking after people. Yeah. Stop pretending. No. Hey, and don't forget, he just got another two hundred and fifty million fucking dollars on proposal in. Yep. While he's already wasted all this money poisoning the goddamn city. Allegedly. I, I saw. I saw Allegedly. a billboard that. Allegedly. I saw a billboard that had a middle-aged uh, black woman on it. It says, if we don't do something, then we'll get nothing. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't, all that exploitation, you know, for other exploitation is wrong. That's wrong. I, I tell you this, there's definitely something going on over here. Because in the hour that I've been waiting to do this story, I swear for God, the temperature of my testicles that went up by 15 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Good. You want to be able to have more kids. It might be those oven mitts. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> the big mitten. All right, Red. Um, thanks for that timely report. Uh, you see any kids wandering around? Because they sure the hell ain't in school. Or any people. You know, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you. You know they say animals can sense when something ain't right. I haven't even seen a stray dog come try to take a piss over here. <laughs> wow. That is a trip. That is a trip. You don't That's see any. You something. It's almost like a canary in the mine. Yeah. Stray dog in the field. <laughs> oh, yeah, Detroit. Another problem that's not being taken care of. The packs of wild dogs running around here. That is your neighborhood. I mean, it's coming right from the guy. Well, can you tell us what, where are you, Red? I know you said the east side, but any. Well, Garrett, right next I, to your I house. I got a nice surprise for you. When you get out your bubble in the studio, <laughs> me and my camera person going to drop by your house for a little cocoa and marshmallows on that nice fire pit you got in the backyard. Because <laughs> I ain't more than a mile from up the street from you. Well, gee, all right. Well, I'm not there, so next time, Red. All right, Red, thanks, man. It might man. be healthy you're not being in this area right now. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, you know, it's, just before we go, you know what's fucked up about that? In my neighborhood, oh, we ain't having that. We ain't playing. That's coming out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't fuck around like that. My kid is, I'll go fucking nuts. And I know the people of the city are, and nobody's listening. Try that in New York City. Oh, man, you on front page. They don't do that in L.A. Try it in true. Oakley County. Ain't that where the green ooze was coming out in Oakley County? Or was that McCone? Try it in Gross Point. Oakland County, and they put the motherfucker in prison. Yep. Yes. He he got a place like that in Detroit. It's got orange ooze. I took it. I got photos of it, right? Just the yep. events overtook it. But he got one in the orange ooze. You didn't even hear about it. People yeah, don't deserve quick, it. Let's make this clear. The contractors under agreement with the city is supposed to come back and clean this up at their cost. 
But if you can look at the ground, give me a sign of this ground one more time. You can see none of this shit's been cleaned up. This is like ground up gravel and, and concrete. Where's, where's the grass? I remind you, the feds are also now actually just going to, they, they paid money for grass and for the mowing of grass. That don't look like no grass. That, no, that's, that's what we call in the city. We call that hood grass. <laughs> it's when all the weeds grow up enough to look like grass. Once it's <laughs> as long as it's something green. That ain't even green. And green what shit ain't mess. even growing in it. It's just a mess. So this is what we're fit. Thanks, Red. We're, we're going to go now. Thanks for doing that. I'll talk safe. to you later. Be careful. Oh, <laughs> Let's see, the gentrifiers think that that's cool. That's like, oh, you know, this is the hood. This is, you know, this is the struggle. Oh, you mean like <laughs> me having red out there in oven mitts and a, no. a flaming white no, suit? No, he's talking about what's wrong with it. I'm saying, you know, when people in that, the new people in that neighborhood or when they get wind of it, you know, they're either going to be offended by it and they may actually do something. We have a pretty strong... Um, you know, neighborhood association, but then there are people that have come in and they find they're intrigued by all that. Well, here's the, in Hey folks, get politically active. It's an election year. This is a huge issue. Big time. Hey, Johnny fed. I'm going to write this this week. I might as well let y'all have a Johnny. Wait, this is breaking news. No. <laughs> hey, Johnny, you got to come by the summertime. Cause you can't come close to November. Cause you'd be accused of like, call me. Call me a swing in an election with Hillary in the emails. That's a great point. Can't do that. Do it now. If you come afterwards, well, people weren't informed when they were making a vote. Okay? And if you're not going to come at all, let us know that we just left to our own. Mm. At least we know for sure. Government reports that shit's poison. Contaminated. Whatever you want to call it. Mercury. Nobody was watching. You were told, Mayor Duggan, minimum minimum you abdicated your duty minimum remember he and i want to let it rip and he's like yeah oh we got a we got a load ticket providence where this dirt came from for every one of these i said well give them to me as it goes on over the years they're not there they're not there not to mention the bid rigging collusion and <laughs> all of it <laughs> jesus christ allegedly I need a vacation. Okay. But I'm not allowed to go on one. So. Oh, sure you are. <laughs> hey, listen. There's no travel ban. I can't believe this. Why don't you do something about voter suppression? <laughs> Nibbling on sponge cake. Watching the sun bake. I'm just faking. I, I still don't know these words. <laughs> All of those tubers covered with love. I think mannequin moved. <laughs> Ram is a groove. Might be too upbeat. Smell of shrimp there beginning to grow. Wasted away again in Margarita. I'll break it off in your ass. Searching for my little shaker song. Bullshit going on down here. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's nobody's okay, fault. That was my main game for. As long as you know the word Margaritaville, right? <laughs> You're doing a great job faking the lyrics. Stay there, some of the men. <laughs> Nothing is sure but this brand new tattoo. This is shit. But it's a real beauty. A Mexican cutie. How it got here, I have a clue. clue. Wasted away again so in my career. In with President Biden. <laughs> Some of our best work in the back of a Subaru. <laughs> with a hot spot. Now I think. <laughs> well, I'm getting Hell some stuckies. Apple House. Driving through Macon. Thought I smelled bacon. 
next thing you know, the fuzz has got me. Wait, there's a hand. Whoa! A hand through the shower curtain. Bubbles moving. Flip-flop Stepped on a pop-top Cut my heel Had to cruise on back home But there's booze in the blender And soon it will render That frozen concoction That helps me yeah, yeah. Come on, Joey Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Can't hear Joe. I don't know the lyrics. Oh, a law shaker of song. I don't know. Hey, do it again. Some people say they're safe. Men to blame. Just keep never stop. I know. It's my own damn fault. It's not about the lyrics, Joe. It's about the feeling. Can't you feel it on him? And people say that there's a woman to blame. Yeah, I do. It's, it's definitely her fault. <laughs> Sometimes. Peace. There's a lot of bullshit going on down here.